Is today the day you want to try animation? Well, animation can feel really intimidating, but with Procreate's Animation Assist, it makes it easy. And I'm going to show you how with five animations that only take five minutes to make. Hi, welcome to Haley K Studio. I'm Haley and I like to make Procreate tutorials for beginners. Today I'm sharing how you can start animating as a beginner in Procreate using the Animation Assist tool. So let's not waste any time and get started right now. So first I wanted to start with a quick overview of the Animation Assist. To turn on the Animation Assist, you go to the Actions tab and then under Canvas, you toggle on Animation Assist. This will open up the animation timeline at the bottom. And this is a simplified timeline where each layer becomes a frame of animation. So you can add a frame here or under your layers panel, you can add a frame by just simply adding a new layer. My favorite part about Procreate's Animation Assist are the onion skinning. It lets you see the previous and next frames faintly, so it makes it easier to draw smooth transitions. In your frame management, you can add, duplicate, and rearrange frames very easily using the timeline or your layers tab. It's a really powerful animation tool and it's great for beginners. So let's make our first five minute animation. So I'm just using a blank canvas that is 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels and it's set to 300 dpi and today I'm just going to be using the monoline brush from the sketching tab from my brush library to make all of my animations and I'm just going to be doing these in black and now I'm ready to do my first animation which is just a continuous looping circle and I'm going to get started by turning on my animation assist by going to actions canvas and then turning on animation assist and now our animation timeline is at the bottom. So now I'm ready to draw my first frame and that's just going to be simply a circle. And so I'll draw my circle and hold down my screen so that it creates a perfect circle. And I'll just put this to very the very center of my canvas. And now I wanna add my second frame so I can add a frame on the timeline or you can do it from the layers panel. So I'll just add a new layer here. With this looping circle, it's not gonna ever be a completed circle, but I do wanna use this perfect circle as a guide. And another feature I love about the animation assist is setting a frame to a background. So this is the background frame and it won't appear in our final animation. And I'm just going to turn the, down the opacity on my guiding circle. And now I'm ready to start my first frame of the real animation. I'm just going to pick a point somewhere in the circle that I want my loop to start. And I'm just going to start over here and I've just got a small line on the circle. And now I will add a new layer and I'm going to trace over that and have it extend further along the circle. And I'm just going to repeat this process. And so I've added another layer and I will start at the beginning of my circle and trace down further. And as I reach the center line of my circle, I will shorten the length of the tail of where my circle is looping. I'm going to start my the tail of my loop a little bit lower and follow that along. And the circle doesn't have to be completely perfect every time you add a new section of your loop, but you can begin your arc and then hold it down and then edit so it follows that line of the circle perfectly. I want to make it seem like it it's going a little bit slower, so I will reduce the size of the curve that I draw. So we just followed that circle all the way around, and now we can play back our loop. And let's go ahead and turn off that guiding circle that is at the very bottom so we don't see it during our playback. And now we'll just hit play, and now we've made a looping circle. So our next animation is going to be a shining sun. This animation and the one we just did previously is an example of what's called a straight ahead animation. It simply means that you animate in a linear way from start to finish and from frame by frame. And we're going to do that again with this shining sun. And so I will turn on the animation assist and I'm just going to start off with another circle in the center. 
and I will hold it down to create a perfect circle and then I will go to the move and transform to put it directly in the middle. Again, I want this circle to be part of my background so that I don't have to redraw it for every frame, but we're not gonna hide this one. We are gonna keep this one as part of our animation. And now I will add my first frame and the start of all of my sun rays that are gonna be radiating out. And I'm just gonna start with a dot all the way around my circle and those are the starts to the sun rays. And now I will add a new layer for my second frame or technically my third frame. And I can still see this, the dots as part of the onion skin feature. And I can start growing my rays. And now they've grown a little bit more and I'll add another layer and I will make them grow even longer. And I'm just gonna continue this on for another few frames and then we'll start tapering off the rays. So now my sun rays have grown and we can play those back a little bit. And now we kind of want them to taper off as they, they get farther away from the sun. So now I will add a new layer. So I will start the ray a little bit farther up the last sun ray that I drew. And now I will add another layer above that and I will shorten it even more. And then I will add another new layer and I will go to the very end and I'm even going to add a dot behind it just to indicate that it is tapering off. And now I've added my final layer and I will shorten it even more to just a dot at the very end. And now what I want to do is I want to add a layer of just the blank circle. So I'm going to duplicate my circle layer and I'm going to put it to the very top and now we'll have a blank circle at the very end. And so now we can play back our radiating sun and we can see those lines tapering off as if it's a nice sunny day and the sun is shining bright. And we can even turn down the frames per second down to 10 and it creates a very smooth animation. So another animation style I wanted to share is the wiggling animation. A wiggle animation adds a playful kind of jittery effect to illustrations by subtly shifting lines or shapes back and forth. The way we're going to create this animation is by retracing three times and then animate them in a loop. So I want to do a little wiggling plant. Again, I will go to actions and I will turn on animation assist. And my first layer is going to be my little plant pot. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I like how all of these animations are a little bit imperfect. Swiftly draw a little plant pot. Our plant leaves will just be coming up from that portion of our little plant pot. Now I will add a new layer to begin drawing our plant leaves. And I will use this plant pot layer as our background. So it stays stationary and static throughout the animation. We don't need the plant pot to really move. So for my first layer, I will just draw my little plant leaves that I will retrace. So here's our first layer of our plant leaves and now I will add a new layer to retrace them. And I'm not going to trace them perfectly and you don't want to trace them perfectly because you do want to see a subtle change. And now I'm gonna add one more layer to retrace them again. And now we have our three layers of our wiggle animation. And animating three frames to create this wiggle effect is really effective because it adds just the right amount of subtle organic movement without it feeling too chaotic. So let's replay this and see how this looks. It looks pretty fast, so let's turn, this, turn down the frames per second to seven and then let's replay that now. 
And that is a very simple animation that you can make. These are great for making like a GIF file to add like transparently to a video that you're making or like your stories for Instagram or anything like that. This simple animation is perfect to add a unique animation of anything that you can draw and doing it in the wiggle style is super fun and it's really quick. The next animation I want to share is a rain flood and this is a simple animation that I made for the video where I shared how to draw a kawaii style flat light image and I had it in a rainy day theme. This is a great animation to use as like a transition in a video. That's what I used it for and so now I'm going to show you how I made that. So the first thing I did was I wanted to give myself a guide on how the water was going to flood. So briefly I'm going to switch my brush to the Narinder pencil. I haven't even turned on the animation assist yet, but I'm going to use this first layer to start my guide for where my flood is going to go. And so it's going to start at the bottom of the page and it's just going to keep going up. Again, I still haven't turned on the animation assist yet, but now I want to draw a couple layers of raindrops. And I am going to go back to my monoline brush. And for this one, we will go ahead and, and switch to a, a color. I'm going to use this blue color that I, that I had used originally. This is from a color palette that I shared. And I'll just link this color palette down below. It's just a kind of a rainbow of pretty pastel kind of colors. And that's what I'm going to use to create my raindrops. And so I'm going to create three frames of raindrops just varying along the page and we're going to uh, duplicate these layers several times while it rains. Okay, so now we've drawn our raindrops and if we turn them all on, they're not overlapping too much so there'll be enough variation in how they animate and that's what we're going for. So now I'm going to count how many levels of rain flood that we're going to have and that's going to be important for this next step. So I'm going to have 11 layers of rain flood and so I want to have at least 11 layers of rain. So I want to duplicate these, but I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time duplicating them. So I'm going to do this the quickest way I know how, and that is selecting all of them and grouping them. And then I'm going to collapse that down and duplicate this. So now we have all these layers of rain. And so I want them out of their groups and that's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to grab them and then take them out of the group and then just repeat that until they're no longer in groups. If they were to remain in the groups, they would not animate correctly. And now I can just delete all of those groups and now all of my rain is separated out of that. And now I want to turn on the animation assist and we're going to start seeing the rain come to life. So I will go to actions and then animation assist. I'm just going to turn off my first layer and then just play my rain. And it's kind of fast, so I'll turn it down a little bit. We'll go to eight frames per second. And now that looks like a pretty solid rain. And I will turn on my first layer now and we can start drawing the rising rain flood. And I will go to that first layer and turn it on as a background. And I'm going to skip this first layer as far as starting the flood. And I'm going to go to that second layer, or I guess layer three, to begin the flooding part. And so I will just retrace what I drew down here and fill it in. And then I will go to my next layer and start filling in my flood and then just dragging and dropping to fill in that portion of the layer. And I'll just repeat this process until my entire page has been flooded. So I've got a few too many layers of raindrops, so I'm just going to add them to the bottom so that we have a few extra layers of raindrops at the beginning so it feels like a more realistic flood. And now we can play this back. And now the rain is filling up our screen. So I will turn off that first layer and another fun thing to do is to create the illusion of some 
splashing where the raindrops are meeting the top of the flood. And so now we'll just find a layer that we can start that with. So we can see where a raindrop is overlapping with the surface of the flood and you can just kind of make a, a few little lines to as if it were a raindrop splashing on the top of some water. And you only have to do that where you're finding there are raindrops touching the surface of that flood. Now we're ready to play back our entire animation. Super fun, really effective, super quick. This last animation is just taking a piece of text and making it grow. This is a super simple one, and so let's go ahead and get started on it. So first we want to add some text to our canvas. So we'll just go to the Actions tab and then Add Text, and we'll simply type the word Hello. And we can change the font to whatever font that you like. I'm going to use my Jelly Roll font that I made. I can link this one down below if you would like to use it. And now I am just going to center it on my canvas. In order to complete this, I'm going to rasterize this so it stops popping up my keyboard. And rasterizing it just makes it an image and no longer text that you can edit. So you just go to your layer stack and you tap on rasterize. And you get this kind of red warning of death, but it's not scary. It's just letting you know you rasterized it. would like it to start small. And now I want to have a guide as how big I want it to get. Because I don't want to get lost. I want to create a smooth animation making it grow. I'm going to duplicate my hello layer. And I'm just going to set the word to the size and to the spot that I would like it to grow to. So here is our start and here is our finish. And now I will go ahead and just turn on the animation assist by going to actions and canvas and animation assist. And so we have our start and our finish and it doesn't look very good with those two. <laughs> we'll go to our smallest version of it and we'll just duplicate that, select that layer and then just make it a little bit bigger and then continue this process until it matches up with the largest version of it. And we can even keep recentering it. So now we have all of our hellos and you can kind of see within those onion skins how it's going to grow. And now we can play and watch our text grow. Hello! And we can turn down our frames per second to a nice steady seven. And there's our growing text. So now that we've completed our animations, I'm gonna show you how you can export them and use them. The easiest way to do it is just within the animation. You can go to the Actions tab and then Share. And you have a couple different options to share it as an animation. You'll definitely want to make sure you export it as an animated file and not a flat or static file or just like a, a regular PNG. So if you want to export your animation and use it as a GIF file, go ahead and tap on animated GIF. This will create a GIF for you that will just be a looping animation. You can even at this point reduce the frames per second or speed up the frames per second. Uh, you can make those adjustments here as well, but if you don't want to have the white background, you tap on transparent background and then you can see that your GIF is right here. It's hard to see it there, but there I've inverted it so that you can see it better before I export it. So that's how it will export as a transparent GIF file. So the only other thing that I really toy with is if I want to have it at the max resolution, which this will export a file that is 11 megabytes big, or you can change it to web ready so it's a smaller file and it's easier to use as a GIF like on a social media po post or any other web based post that you're going to use your GIF for. And when you're ready, you just tap on export and then you can just save the image to your camera roll. The other option is to export this as an animated MP4 file. And again, you just go to actions and then share, and then you can tap on animated MP4. It's not going to be transparent. The file will stay pretty small and it will be an actual video file and not a GIF. It all depends on how you want to use these animations and what application you're using them. 
and that's going to determine how you're going to export them. And you can honestly choose any of these animated files that you want. So I hope these easy animations have inspired you to try this tool. And now that you have learned how to use this one, you'll definitely want to learn Procreate's other built-in tools. So check out the link on screen to my playlist that's called Using Procreate's Built-in Features Only, and you can start utilizing all the best tools that Procreate has to offer. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna see more Procreate tutorials for beginners, please hit that subscribe. So I wanted to thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.